Hello everyone, Johnny Hurricane here from GamersHeroes.com and today we'll be going over more in depth what each of these stats actually do in Cyberpunk 2077 so you know which ones to pick in the beginning. Let's get started. Alright, we're going to start with Body, which obviously gives you more HP, more stamina points, increases your damage of fists, things like that. You can see all that in the beginning so it's not a big deal. The ones you can't see is Athletics, Annihilation, and Street Brawler. Athletics is more stamina, more HP. Basically, you become more durable. That makes sense, right? It's a body stat, so you can take more hits. Oh, you can also carry more stuff as well. Annihilation, this focuses more on heavy weapons and shotguns. Basically, you'll do more damage, reload faster, uh, easier to handle. So if you're looking to be an up-close-and-personal or an LMG type of guy, body, again, will be helpful for this. Uh, each of these stats, you will need a perk point, not an attribute point. And then Street Brawler, that increases your damage with blunt weapons, reduces stamina with blunt weapons, more armor, things like that. Basically, if you're planning to use baseball bats or clubs, anything like that, again, body will be for you. Uh, this does also improve a little bit the hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat as well. Next, we got Reflexes as a main stat. This increases your evasion. It also makes it so it's easier to crit. And you get more damage from the Mantis Blades. That is a mod. You've probably seen it in the trailers where like a bunch of blades come out of your arm and you can attack with them. You will not be getting that early in the game. So if that's what you're trying to focus on, I don't recommend it. However, this also is where you get increased damage from, well, a lot of weapons, quite frankly. Uh, reflexes, assault rifles, more damage, easier to handle. Uh, you'll do more damage from cover. All the perks were sort of, uh, to assault rifles are there. Handguns as well. Uh, this counts for pistols and revolvers, just for the record, similar to assault rifles. Uh, an assault counts for SMGs as well. More damage, quicker handling, better reload. And then blades, this is what I'm specting. Faster attacks, quicker heavy damage, um, more armor when moving. And I needed that one right there. Oh, and I should have mentioned this. As you can see, there's a skill progression, very similar to Skyrim. The more you use, like, katanas, blades for instance you will increase your skill progression and you will get rewards for doing so. This incentivizes you to, of course, use different techniques. Uh, this counts for blade knives as well as katanas. Uh, technical ability, crafting and engineering also increases your armor and tech weapons. Tech weapons are kind of, you'll get them early, like uh, probably four or five hours in, and you hold basically the charge weapons. You hold the charge them up and shoot them. And then you get crafting, which, of course, you can craft rare materials, get more materials for disassembly, find more materials, less materials used to craft. Here's a little look at my crafting thing. I, I have, like, one or two points in crafting, so mine's not very good. But you can see you can craft weapons, you can craft grenades, you can craft stims and ammo. As you progress, you can craft more and more advanced stuff. And it is pretty easy to level up. Uh, you disassemble weapons and then... Uh, make new I, I make a lot of grenades but you can make weapons if you want um i don't think this is one worth heavily focusing on but it's good to have in the back burner to build different things and having these stats all of these stats will sometimes open different conversation options and allow you to like uh, for athletics or body you might be able to break down a door technical ability you can disable a camera things like that um, they're not required but they are extra little bonuses and now we go to engineering this is mainly about grenades and uh, getting more equipment or uh, resources from mechanical enemies that you break down. Uh, here's a good one, by the way. Can't touch this. Uh, grenades don't affect you. So if you're a melee guy like me, your own grenades don't affect you. Their grenades will. But yeah, you want to get that. And of course, you can have ones that increase the explosion radius or you can see the radius. So basically, if you are planning on doing grenades, good idea for engineering and technical ability. Intelligence, again, another thing you will probably use in some conversations. Breach protocol and quick hacking. This one, you will not know until you get into game. So I'm going to explain it. Uh, the breach protocols include what are called demons. Now, these are usually used to disable or weaken enemies or, for instance, make it so cameras can't see you for three minutes. It depends. Also, you get increased money from, like, little chests that you hack. Uh, money's not really a big issue, so I wouldn't worry a ton about that. I'm going to show you what this actually means, though, in-game. So one of the buttons, this is uh, your cyber deck, which also goes into intelligence, but we'll get into that in a second. Uh, when you scan individuals, you can do different things, short circuit. Uh, these are based upon your mods, but you can always breach protocol. 
This is something where your daemons are implemented. So we're gonna go ahead and click breach protocol. And as you can see right over here, mass vulnerability reduces the resistance of enemies. That is the one I picked because I'm a Katana user. So as such, I want less physical resistance on my enemies. So then you have to fill out this little chart. And if you get it all right, boom, there you go, mass vulnerability. You might get the opportunity to do another one. I didn't have the right options, but there you go. As you can see, breaching, boom, all of them are now mass vulnerable. And I can use my katana to do more damage. Obviously, you'll want to pick one that is probably more based on your play style for the demons, but that's how they're done. Everybody gets this. You don't have to have a ton of intelligence. Everybody has the um, breach protocol. And next is quick hacking, which is also an intelligence. This has to do with your RAM and your abilities while you are actually quick hacking. Breach protocol will always cost zero, but other abilities will cost a certain amount of RAM. I'm going to show you pretty much the same footage, but we're going to go over it in quick hacking form. So when you're quick hacking, breach protocol always zero. Reboot optics and short circuit, those are two pieces of equipment I have. You'll start with that, by the way. And as you can see, it says two and three. That's how much of the RAM it is going to take. And that is what quick hacking skill tree basically revolves around, is making it so it takes less RAM to do, or you get RAM back quicker, or you do increased damage with your quick hacks and all that business. It might sound like quick hacking might not be that important, but as you get going in the game, it becomes more and more useful, so don't sleep on it. Lastly, we have cool. This is another conversation choice. I see this one quite a bit, actually. So, But it also focuses on stealth. Improved takedowns, uh, non-lethal takedowns, dagger throw, moving faster while stealth. Basically, it involves any type of stealth thing. And then cold-blooded is kind of the opposite. So stealth is like non-lethal takes down. Cold-blooded is, I've had it level up basically when I've gone on a killing spree against thugs, and that's what it is. As you kill more enemies, it all revolves around this cold-blooded skill. You get more movement speed, you get more attack speed after you kill an enemy for a short, short amount of time. So that's what it is. So if you're planning on killing a lot of people, it's worth at least checking out, especially as a melee user, because that movement speed is very important. It also increases mono wire damage, which you probably won't get for a very long time. Um, you need level 20 street cred, and after eight hours, I'm like probably level nine. But I found I got really lucky and found a legendary one in a chest, so that's why I have it. So you, it's a really cool little funky weapon. But again, if you're focusing stat wise on your weapons, cool is not the one you want to head into super early. All right, I hope that helped you to understand the stats in a little bit more depth because I know when you begin the game, they don't, it, it tells you the basics, but it doesn't tell you what goes into what weapon, what goes into what type of, uh, you know, hacking, stealth, all that business. And this should help you understand a little better what you're building into. Don't worry a ton about it, to be fair, because you get stat points pretty consistently throughout the game as long as you keep doing missions. But anyways, that'll do it for me. If you liked what you saw and got what you needed, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, Gators.